sensitive Why everybody so sensitive Does anybody even give We fill these babies up with medicine Yeah, yeah Ooh, ooh, sipping on juice Sitting in the coop, thinking about school Thinking about you, come through Sniffing on blue Hello, C Stars. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I am doing good. Why don't you introduce yourself to the, to the masses? My name is Martina Williams. Um, I've been playing music my whole life. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. I grew up, this is actually my hood. I grew up right here in Northeast Columbia, right behind Columbia Mall. My first job was at Columbia Mall. Um, I went to uh, Conger Elementary, Windsor Elementary, did middle school, and graduated from Richmond East High School. So this is my stopping grounds. It's nice to be back. And thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Oh, of course, y'all give a round of applause for Martina. <laughs> you know, I gotta ask, with the, with the violin, how did you start? I actually started in Richmond, too. Um, I, Every, um, the middle of high school orchestras for each feeder school did concerts um, at the elementary schools. So the Jim Middle and Richard Northeast orchestras came and did concerts at Windsor Elementary, where I was at. And actually the first time that I knew I wanted to play strings was watching the Raspberry Beret video from Prince because he had a string quartet in the Raspberry Beret video and Prince is my idol and I thought that because he had that and it was cool I wanted to do that but it was solidified when the Dent and Rich Northeast High School Orchestra came and did concerts and so I started at Digital School. Gotcha, gotcha. So you know, you, you just mentioned Prince. Was was he your biggest influence or what was He your was my biggest influence. And um, I knew one of the questions was that if you could be, if you could work with a creative, who would it be? He would be my number one, for sure. Gotcha. Yes. Okay, I like that, I like that. So um, when it comes to your the art of, you know, being a violinist, what's, what's the best, what's your best work? You know, is it something that you uh, created yourself or is it something that you actually played that somebody else is? Oh gosh, that's a hard question because um, I have written original music and um, two of my original songs were they world premiered at the Cover Center when I was in high school. Oh wow. Um, nice. Yes, and that was a, you know, uh, once in a lifetime experience. But um, I'm the type of artist where everything that I do has some significance or some emotional attachment. Um, so that's why I can't pick something that I do over another because everything that I do has a significance to me. It has an emotional attachment and has some kind of a message that I relay. Um, and so, I can't say that there's one thing above another. They, they all have significance to me. Gotcha, gotcha, I like that, I like that. So, yeah. what we're gonna do now, we like to play this game we call Word Association. Okay. I'm gonna throw you out a word, you tell me, you know, what comes to mind. You know, oh, what shit. What comes to mind, baby. All right. You ain't gonna do nothing crazy, so the thug. That's all right, I'm crazy, I'm crazy, we can do something crazy. So, <laughs> your, your first word is gonna be South Carolina. Home. Okay. Yeah. Home. Oh. Yeah, you said you, you're born and bred. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of associations that I can make with it, but that was the first thing that came to mind, so we'll just leave it at that. We're gonna leave it at that. Hot as hell. <laughs> Shit. Satan's armpit. 
We can do a lot of work so Jesus, but homeless the first one, so we'll keep it in the okay. All right. My second word for you would be family. Family gets on my damn nerves sometimes. <laughs> that's an association. And that's the truth. I love them to death, but damn, they get on my nerves so much. So, yeah, that's a lot of a word association, but I'm sure y'all can relate. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, my last word for you is going to be Soda City Market. Heaven on Earth. I'll break that down for us. Whew, I'll try to break this down as succinctly as possible. Um, I moved to Las Vegas a few years ago. And I left Charleston, which is a place where I had a great amount of success. But I was in my early 40s, and I thought if I don't go, I'll never go. I thought I would find my greatest success there, and what I found was my greatest failure there. For reasons that I cannot get to explain, have no, enough time to explain. I was homeless there for a while, and my ego and my pride kept me from reaching out to my family or reaching out to people to help me out. Because I just felt like I went there with my own decision and I would get myself out of it. And just when I was deciding to finally getting out of it, my big brother died. And my big brother was my hero. To me, he was the greatest man that I've met other than my father. He would give you the shirt off his back, the last dollar in his pocket, without hesitation, reservation, or judgment. It didn't matter who you are, where you came from, he would do that for you. And just when I think myself out of homelessness and he died, what little part of me was left that Las Vegas didn't destroy, that destroyed. And I decided to move home to be with my family and then the pandemic hit. And so for a year and a half, I sat in my room and I cried and wondered why I hated my life. And sometimes I didn't care if I went to sleep and woke back up. And then one day, I realized that my brother would not want, have wanted me to live that kind of life. Because my brother didn't live that way. I knew that he would not have wanted me to live that way. And I didn't know what to do. But I knew that music was the best part of me. It is born of the best thing of me. It was born of every positive thing, all the hard work, all the dedication and passion and love that is in me. Music was that. And I didn't know what to do, but I decided that if I put that first, if I put the best thing about me first, everything else will fall into place. Yeah. So what you're seeing right now, <laughs> what you're seeing right now is me fighting for my life and me putting the best thing about me first. And I don't know if you really know anything about me, but if you look at my Facebook, if you look at my Instagram, and you look at the past four, five, six months, I went from nothing to a whole lot of something. That's, that's why I'm here tonight. And when you ask me to be here, it means so much to me. And I'm sorry that I got here late. But I had another gig, and I'm so grateful that you were gracious enough to allow me to do my gig first and come here and be with you. I really appreciate it. So, anyways, what was the question? <laughs> you know what? We ain't even worried about it. We
we do our <laughs> So I gotta, I gotta ask, you know. Yes, ask whatever you want, baby. I gotta ask, so. Ask uh, whatever you want. How, how does it feel, you know, to perform in front of a, a packed house? How does that feel? What feeling do you get? Oh, shit. I mean, I wish. I wish that I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that, and what I've learned from being at Soda City, and the question was, so Soda City was heaven on earth. Um, I never thought that I would be on the street corner performing in front of people because I was always used to being on stage. So I kind of thought there was like a stigma to it because you know some people think it's panhandling or that it's beneath them. And I, yeah. I was honestly one of those people because I've performed on a lot of great stages. And what I've learned is that um, the stage is where you make it. If it's on the street corner, if it's in front of 10,000 people, it doesn't matter. The stage is where you make it. And you have an opportunity to reach people and to change their lives. And standing out on the corner at Soda City has made me realize that I change lives because Especially with kids. Kids are the most honest, pure people in the world. Yeah, right. And when a parent or when a kid walks by and they stop what they're doing and they're mesmerized by what I do, that's a real thing. That's a beautiful thing. I have a gift so wonderful, so powerful so beautiful that it makes a child who doesn't know me better stop what they're doing and look at me. I have a gift so beautiful and wonderful that it makes an adult who's caught up in all the fucked up shit in their head stop and look at me. And that is a wonderful, powerful thing. And I did not realize in the 47 years that I've been on this earth that I had something beautiful and special and powerful. And what I'm going through right now has made me realize that I have something greater than, greater than myself. And anything fucked up that I've been through or that I feel, I have to push that aside and say that I have something to give to other people. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's why I'm here right now. Any events or projects? Oh shit, I got a lot of shit I got coming. A lot. <laughs> Let the people know what you got coming up. Oh, let's see. Okay, just this week was today, Thursday. So I had two gigs today. So I had a gig at the Grand earlier. Um, and then I've got Soda City tomorrow. I mean, sorry, actually, so tomorrow, Friday. Friday, I have a private event at the University of South Carolina, which is my alma mater. It's a fundraising event. So that's wonderful. And then Saturday, I have Soda City. Sunday, I have Uncle Fester's open mic, which uh, anytime Hollow Art takes over, <laughs> Sunday, Monday at uh, Uncle Fester's, you know it's going to be popping. So that's great. I love it when y'all take over. And then um, after that, I have uh, Show Chip Sundays at Capital Club. Then I have the Wounded Warrior Project benefit at PC Celebrity 9, and that's on Monday. And then I have a wedding on my birthday, which is the 13th. And then I've got a slew of other things going on. So yeah, I've got a lot going on. Yeah. Okay. Trying to get there. Oh, you got it, got it. So yeah. I gotta ask for sure, you know, being a musician, what 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 do you listen to? What do you listen to? Oh gosh. I hear music in everything. I hear music in babies crying. I hear music in honking horns. I hear music in a lot of stuff that people would consider noise. And I think that's a wonderful thing, but sometimes it's, sometimes I just want to shut it off like, oh my God, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, so I hear music in everything, but my, um, most of what's on my playlist is stuff that I have to learn for gigs. But if I didn't have to learn for gigs, 
Like I love nineties hip hop and rap. Yes. Uh, yes. DJ Clue. DJ Clue. I love DJ. Clue. Oh, I love his mixtapes. Uh, I love electronic dance music. Okay. Uh, like DJ Sasha. And then I'm classically trained. So I love Fox. I love Mozart. I love that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so I, but I love a lot of different stuff. I love a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Versatile. I yeah. like that. I like that. So with everything you've been through, uh, when would you feel that you made it? Um, or so have you already made it in your eyes? Well, every time I wake up in the morning, I feel like I can make it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so there's, there's that. But um, I played Carnegie Hall when I was in high school. And Carnegie Hall, they say for most serious musicians, if you made Carnegie Hall, you made it. So I, I didn't even realize when we were up there that we made it, or, or until we got up on stage, that we made it. But I still don't think until afterwards, for a long time, we realized that we made it. But I've been on um, America's Got Talent. I've been on a more Puppet show. Um, so I've had a lot of moments where I felt like I accomplished a goal. Um, but I don't think that if I got to a point where I feel like I made it, I think that's when it's time to stop. I, I feel like there's always something else to do and something else I want to do, so I, I don't think that I've had a I arrived or I made it moment because there's one goal and there's another goal and this another goal. Yeah. 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 So I gotta ask, what what advice can you give to others? What advice do you have for others? Be your fucking self. Uh, do what it is that you feel is in your heart to fuck into you. Um, I haven't said it to you or to a lot of people. I'm trans and I don't hide that. Um, I'm not ashamed of it. Um, I know the world maybe wants me to be ashamed of it or doesn't accept it. And there may be some people in the audience who don't accept it. And I understand that. Like, you know, but I respect people. If I want, I feel like respect begins with you. And if you want people to respect and accept you for who you are, it's a two-way street. And I try to I try to understand people because I feel like somebody like me has to have a greater understanding and a greater amount of compassion and sympathy for other people. And this is fucking hard. Especially with everything that's going on. Um, but that's what music is for, because music is a language that we can all understand. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how much money you got. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is. It doesn't matter what your gender is. Music is a language that no matter where you come from in the world, but no matter what your circumstance is, you can understand and appreciate that. And I am so grateful to God that I am a communicator of that, that I'm a teacher of that, that I'm an interpreter of that, that I'm a performer of that. I'm so grateful to God for that because it builds bridges in a world where people want to divide us. And that's why we're here right now because of music, because of things that we share in common. And it's a beautiful, wonderful thing. So I appreciate you opening your hearts and opening your stage to somebody like me. And always, you always, it. always, always. So I gotta, I gotta say, how can the people follow you and why should they follow you? Well, <laughs> nobody has to follow me. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's the right word. I would hope people appreciate what I do. I want you to be a leader in your own life and to do the things that you want to do. 
I don't want you to follow anybody else. I want you to be a leader in your own mind. If there is a reason to appreciate what I do, I hope it inspires you to do the shit that you want to do in your own mind. Whether it be music or art, gymnastics, whatever the fuck you want to do, just do that. Like, like look at me and know that there's somebody that has been through a lot of shit that has a lot of the chips stacked against them that said, fuck it, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Like, do what you wanna do. So don't follow me. Lead in your own life and do what you wanna do. Now, if you wanna see what the hell I wanna do because you're nosy, <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook, which I hate social media. I, I'm, ter I'm serious, I hate fucking social media. And the only reason I'm on social media is because I have to promote the shit that I do. Exactly. That's the yeah. only reason, otherwise I would not be on it. I agree. But, um, yeah, you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram, Hello Art, you can find me, Martina Williams, um, or you can come to Southern City, or any of the places that I have gigs, and just show some love, and um, I'm happy to, sh be sh to show love Um, shout out to Hilo Art. Love y'all, love that. Love the fact that y'all um, showcase um, artists and so many different kinds of artists. Not just black artists or whatever. Um, I love the fact that she showcase all different kinds of artists. And that you do it in so many different places. I love the fact that you help the community um, in the ways that you help the community. I think that's amazing. So shout out to y'all for that. Um, shout out to my friend Puya, who's here, who brought me up here from the grand. <laughs> shout out to Kwame, I love Kwame, I love motherfucking Kwame. I'm sorry, I Mr. Fucking the woman, I'm so mad about Mr. Corner. But you understand why I have to pretend I'm shit with you. Um, shout out to my house for having this because places don't have to have this. Like, they, they don't have to have it. So whenever you have a place that hosts um, something like this, then it's a wonderful thing. And we should be grateful and thankful to them. And all places, like Uncle Fester's or whatever, where, where they allow to have live music and allow people to express themselves. So shout out to them. And shout out to all of you for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Of course, of course. So before we end this interview, I gotta say, are you are you gonna play for us? Yes. No, I just brought this up for the hell of it. I had to know this question I thought it was a prop. And yeah, it's a very expensive prop, but yeah, I just brought it up here for the hell of it. Well, listen, we, we thank you so much for coming on and doing this interview. I want everyone here to run applause. Appreciate it. I could get it together Go find you one better I said